Following the Second World War, tensions between the Free West and the Communist East quickly grew. But this coalition was to be torn asunder. Already an iron curtain had dropped around Poland, Hungary, Yugoslavia, Bulgaria. Soon enough, Europe would be split in half to start an ideological conflict we know as the Cold War. The Communist Party knew that the UN would not budge in Europe, so they set their sights elsewhere. First on this list, Korea. Korea had been invaded by the Japanese in World War II. Both Americans and Soviets had sent in troops to seize the territories from Axis hands. Although both sides' troops had been withdrawn, their political ideology was still left behind. It didn't take long for conflict to arise from the drastically different ideals, and although they had once been united under one flag, their country split in a line they called the 38th Parallel. Tensions in the area were quickly escalating, and on June 25th, North Korea invaded Seoul and completely overwhelmed the South Korean forces. The North Koreans quickly seized and occupied almost the entirety of the South, and the United Nations finally intervened. Sixteen nations sent troops to Korea, including the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, Turkey, Australia, Philippines, New Zealand, Thailand, Ethiopia, Greece, France, Colombia, Belgium, South Africa, Netherlands, and Luxembourg. They held Pusan for three months, weathering attacks in order to wear down the North Korean forces. When the time was right, the Americans decided to launch a counterattack. General MacArthur would send 14,000 Marines to land at Incheon. The Marines were faced with little resistance. They recaptured Seoul and linked with the forces back in Pusan. The North Korean supply lines in the region were subsequently strained, allowing for a swift recapture of the area. After successfully recapturing South Korea, General MacArthur decided to take it a step further. They went on the offensive in the north, capturing Pyongyang on October 12th. Shortly thereafter, MacArthur conducted a series of beach landings in the east and maintained seemingly unstoppable momentum. However, the Chinese quickly took notice of North Korea's now desperate situation. In response to the UN's assaults, sent a quarter of a million troops to Korea. The UN forces were absolutely devastated under the might of this massive assault. And fell back with enormous casualties. This, the result of skilled planning and brilliant organization. The Chinese counted the 10th Corps trapped and out of the war. Hung Nam foiled their plan and puts 100,000 armed and equipped men back into line as the United Nations face up to an imminent Chinese onslaught. During the massive evacuation headed by the United Nations, Many North Koreans took refuge from the incoming communist occupation. If they stayed, they had a very good chance of being killed or imprisoned as capitalist sympathizers. 193 ships responded to the Hungnam Harbor in order to evacuate UN troops. Of these ships was the SS Meredith Victory. A merchant ship previously sent to resupply was supposed to be the final push to Manchuria. The captain of the ship was Leonard LaRue, who responded to the call under no authorities from his superiors. As they arrived at the harbor, 100,000 Korean refugees amassed as far as the eye could see, completely covering the beach and snow-covered hills on the shore. Only hours away from the imminent Chinese invasion, Captain Ru ordered for all of the cargo to be dumped and that the decks be converted to house as many Korean refugees as possible. Over the course of a day, Captain LaRue completely emptied his ship and packed every single deck of his 12-man merchant vessel with Korean civilians. They were among the last to leave the Hungnam Harbor on December 23rd. They set off while the United Nations forces quickly raised the docks with gunfire and explosives in order to deny the enemy of supplies. This would be the start of a 450 mile journey back to Busan, with virtually no food, armament, or escort. The course that we took down, our orders were to, to go directly to Busan. En route to Busan, five babies were born. To think of it uh, uh, facetious, facetiously, we uh, named them uh, uh, because uh, none of us knew much about Korean. We named them kimchi, one, two, three, four, and five, uh, uh, etc. Et uh, one other experience uh, I recall on the trip down was that uh, the captain. Captain Leonard LaRue, who was just a, a, an outstanding man, 
a very religious man, noticed a thin column of smoke coming out of the number three hole. That's the, the hole just forward of the house. And we sent it down a couple of men to investigate, and we found that uh, uh, the Korean refugees were setting fires down uh, in this hold, trying to keep warm and to heat food, but they were setting the fires <laughs> atop these drums of jet fuel. <laughs> um, and uh, you can imagine our concern, uh, I'm not sure of the combustibility of jet fuel, um, but uh, well, it gave us great concern. We got some men down there to uh, investigate and to try to um, instruct the, 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 the Korean refugees as to not to build fires, and we finally got that across. But we did get down to Busan on December 23rd, I believe. Uh, um, it took us about uh, 28 to 30 hours just to get down to uh, Busan. And um, after the, I should also indicate to you, it took us about 14 hours to load the 14,000 people. We were the last ship out with refugees. Um, but by the time we got down into Busan, uh, we were denied uh, the opportunity to offload them. The Chinese had been advancing down, as Ned had mentioned earlier, um, several hundred thousand Chinese had entered the war and were sweeping down the peninsula of Korea. So instead of landing at Busan, they went to the island of Koji to unload the refugees. After a headcount, they found they had rescued 14,000 Korean refugees from Hungnam, plus the five that had been born. Remarkably, not one person among that ship was killed during the rescue. Among the people offloaded on that ship was President Moon Jin's father, mother, and older sister. If it hadn't been for the valiance of these fine men aboard the ship, President Moon may have never been born, much less be president of South Korea. The invasion of Hung Nam was an example of tragedy. Many of those Korean civilians left behind never got to see the light of freedom ever again. But the ones that did escape, like President Moon's family, would never have to face the oppression of communism ever again.